Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel. Today we'll be discussing Novonics. ASX NVX has had a phenomenal past period on the markets. Over the past year, the share price is up by over 200%. And just this past month alone, Novonics has ridden on the tailwinds of this renewable energy transition. The share price for ASX NVX is up by over 50%. It's a fascinating company playing on the frontier, really helping to facilitate this transition towards a decarbonized society. Of course, there's been a lot of excitement for the broader sector, and Novonics has definitely not been immune to that. Today, we'll be unpacking who Novonics is. We'll talk about their offering. We'll talk about what the future may hold for the company. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new around here, welcome. We make daily videos. So if you haven't yet, make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. And a reminder before we dive in, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing we cover on the channel is financial advice. The stocks we cover are not buy recommendations. These videos are just here as a general discussion to be that starting spot for you to do your own research from. And so before unpacking all of the recent news flow and announcements surrounding Novonics that's really driven a lot of the excitement, I thought it makes sense for us to take a step back quickly and think about what the current context is that's driving this renewable energy transition. We know about the context, we've talked about it at length before, we know that there's a focus from governments around the world to really drive this decarbonized society that we're moving towards. We know, of course, the Joe Biden administration in the location where Novonix is in North America is really helping to push this with significant investment in the space, both for the infrastructure as well as for the raw materials as well. There is a lot of excitement and we can see here for some of the charts that Novonix have provided with their recent corporate presentations. We can see that EV sold in 2015 were just a little kernel. In 2021, where we are now, it's around 4 to 5% of cars sold at EV sold. But out to 2030, it looks like there's forecast for up to a third third of the cars that will be sold will be electric vehicles. Of course, this is going to be a huge amount of demand. But what I think is much more interesting as well is people think about this renewable energy transition. They instantly think electric vehicles. They use huge amounts of lithium ion batteries and of course, all of the other raw materials and components that go in them. But there are other different use cases for these as well. And so we can see here with this second graph for battery cell demand out from 2020 out to the forecast of 2030 as well. We can see that in 2020, there's around 240 gigawatt hours, but then we get out to 2030 and we can see there's 2,430 forecasts out. But what's really interesting is the dark green here is EVs. Of course, it's still going to be significantly over indexed in comparison to the other use cases for battery cell demand. But if you look out to 2030, the combined battery cell demand for ESS or energy storage systems, as well as portable electronics, is going to dwarf the total demand for battery cell demand, including EVs, in 2020 or 2021. So it's just a reminder about the exponential growth that we're going to see for this broader sector. And of course, you're going to need all of the raw materials and components to feed into that demand. And so with that understanding about the demand drivers, how does that all come together for Novonics? At their core, Novonix's focus is on really facilitating this transition and helping provide better quality batteries. Of course, there are a few different components, but the two focuses for Novonix is on providing lower cost batteries and providing those for longer life. So underpinning everything they do is their battery technology solutions unit. Here, this is a real competitive advantage because not other, not many other companies have this battery technology solutions unit. They get great visibility across the supply chain and across the broader renewable energy ecosystem. They're able to really roll out rapid testing, design and prototyping, both internally for their anode materials business, as well as their aspiring and growing cathode materials business. But along with that as well, they can provide these solutions and provide these technology understanding to external stakeholders too. You'll know that many of the lithium juniors and many of the early stage miners on the ASX often talk about doing battery technology testing with Novonics, and this is where this comes into play. But this battery technology solutions unit really is that point of difference because it means that they are able to be right on the front line, understanding the ecosystem. They've got a world-class research and development team. Of course, I've recently had Jeff Darn come on board as a chief scientific advisor. They've got a world-class leadership team and a really good understanding, and this really helps keep them propelled at the forefront of the pack. And so with the understanding that the battery technology solution business underpins everything that they do, one of the near-term focuses for Novonix is on really rolling out and scaling their anode battery materials business. So Novonix is the only qualified producer of synthetic graphite in North America. Of course, we know that there's a big focus on localization of supply chains around the world. The North American region is no different. And we know that there's a big focus in the US as well at the moment for onshoring the processing and the manufacturing process and really bringing those jobs back onshore. And Novonix are hoping to feed into that. We can see here that Novonix have provided their outline for their anode battery materials business. In phase one, they're hoping to have 10 tons per annum in 2023 and to uplift that into mid 2020s to 40,000 tons per annum. And then eventually at the back end of this decade to be uplifted to 150,000 tons per annum. 
What's interesting is that Navonics recently closed a purchase of a new facility in Chattanooga as well, which enables them to uplift to 10,000 tons per annum. And as we talked about earlier, there is a significant amount of demand coming online for these lithium ion battery cells. And we know that with the current compositions, good quality graphite anode is a key component of the batteries that are being produced. And so Navonics are really hoping to feed into that. And so of course, Navonics recently had their announcement, which enables them to uplift to 10,000 tons per annum by 2023 with their new purchase. But they do have some initial commercial agreements. We can see here, they have them with two of the leading producers of lithium ion battery cells around the world. You can't really get much bigger than Samsung SDI and Sanyo. The initial deal with Samsung SDI is for 500 tons of synthetic graphite anode. Of course, we know that they'll be hopefully uplifting to 10,000 tons by 2023. And with Sanyo, it's a non-binding memorandum of understanding at the moment, but it will be interesting to see what flows out of this. Of course, rather than just the actual potential revenues that will flow through from this, this is significant validation of the process and the technology and the ultimate outputs that Navonics will be producing. And of course, it bodes well for potential commercial agreements and discussions that they'll be having with other external stakeholders. And so a recent piece of news from ASX NVX that really helped to catalyze this re-rate that they're undergoing at the moment with the share price was that Philip 66, one of the global leaders, was entering into an agreement to acquire a 16% stake in Navonics. Of course, firstly, a global company like Philip 66, this is further validation of the mission and the fact that there is interest in Navonics. Further to the validation and the opportunity that the investment will bring to scale up for Navonics, Philips is also a leading global manufacturer of specialty coke. Of course, this is a key feedstock into the production of of synthetic graphite. So having this secured is very important for Navonics. There are not that many producers of specialty coke at scale around the world. So having that feedstock coming in for Navonics really secures their supply chain. And of course, having a big global leader and a significant name to be partnering with Navonics and be interested in investing in it really paints a fascinating roadmap up ahead for the story. And so building on top of all of the recent news flow and announcements, of course, we know that recently we just had the September quarterly ASX index rebalances announced. And Navonics, along with some of their other peers in the EV battery material space was included into the ASX 300. This is a massive inclusion. It's one of the leading indexes as well on the ASX. It speaks to the scale that they've achieved. Since that day as well, their market cap has actually continued to increase. So it'll be interesting to see how they can continue to grow and any further inclusions moving forward over the next few years. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it out as well. We're the ASX Investor Channel and we make daily videos talking about the stock market investing and we find and analyze the best growth stocks. So if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Make sure you've got your bell notifications turned on as well so you won't miss any of our daily episodes and we'd love to have you join the community. This past period, we've interviewed a range of different ASX CEOs on the channel. So we'll leave links to those up above that you can check out after this one. Thank you so much for joining us. It's, Novonics is a fascinating company. Of course, they're playing right on the forefront of this transition towards a renewable energy space. The valuation has continued to creep up. So that is another question that investors will be discussing moving forward. But the actual space that they're playing in and the opportunity that they're looking to feed into is a compelling one for the decade out above. We'll be interested to see where it heads from here. Thank you for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.